All right, who's ready to see how this thing came back together? I know I am. Roll the intro. I'm gonna clean out these threads before I put it on the engine stand, eight millimeter by one. Most of the threaded holes in the engine block are eight millimeter by one. Be really careful if you put it on a drill. Use the higher setting, which is less torquey. Don't do the torquey setting because it'll just do whatever it wants. So. Go slower on the higher setting and it'll be just fine as long as you don't put it in crooked. Perfect. Those are all clean. Let's get it on the engine stand. I think one of these threaded holes for the timing cover is stripped, maybe that one, and we'll need to have a helicoil installed. Smaller hole in the block is six by one. Six by one. Twelve by one point five on these main bearing studs.
10 by 1.5 for the head studs. Going over the outside of the block with the wire wheel and screwdriver just to loosen up all the, to get off all the loose paint. The top of the block that mates up with the head has lots of little scratches in it. So I'm going to see if I can clean that up just a teeny little bit. I'm starting with 80 grit. It's better than when we started, and that's really all I was looking for. Just wanted to smooth it out a bit. Now that's going to meet up with the head, and that's already been planed by the machine shop. From here to here, that's all been planed. And with the head gasket, that all should look, should fit and seal nicely. There's this little piece of metal left over from the casting process near 70 years ago um, and it seems like it would impede the pro process progress of the water as it's being pumped through this chamber here where the water pump goes so I'm gonna get rid of it There, that looks much better. Don't forget the three threaded holes for the starter. So when I bought the TD, I never checked to see if it had matching numbers the engine and the plate on the firewall um, are supposed to match in order to let you know if that's the engine it came with so never really understood how important that would be um, in maintaining the integrity of the car the uh, value of the car I had have this all taken apart and so here's my stash of parts all labeled and stuff that I've taken off and you can see here one one oh one nine is the engine number I'm pretty sure that's what's on the engine so let's go check and here we are in the shop and indeed it does have matching number 11019. Yes! 
So now I know the frame number matches the plaque, the engine number matches the plaque, all matching numbers means more valuable car. Very good. So I'm getting ready to install the cam. So I've put the center cam bearing right here so that it's ready to accept the cam. Uh, the rear and the front bearings were already installed by the machine shop for me. And the bottom of the center bearing I have right here. Pin spanner holes are going to be facing the front of the engine like that with the oil feed like that. So basically it splits in half and the horizontal line that splits it will be horizontal like that. Go ahead and lube up contact points. Be careful with this front bearing not to scratch it. Well, that center bearing went in a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, it just took a little bit of pushing, but it um, with these snap ring pliers, I was able to adjust it, just twist it a little bit. So um, it's horizontal, that split line is horizontal, like I said, and then so now all that's left is to make sure this little bolt, dowel, pin, bolt, whatever you want to call it, gets seated into that hole. So I'm just going to use a little bit of persuasion with uh, those snap ring pliers and tighten it down so that it fits in that hole. goes it is in the perfect position for that bolt to just freely turn in now they say in the manual once you've tightened it down it's just barely snug make sure the cam is moving freely still and it is so go ahead and tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, just a little past snug, so it's not gonna back out. Still moves freely, good to go. Now we can bolt on this cap. The next step is to install all the pistons, but before I do that, I've got to install new pistons and rings. So I'll put some new rings on there, replace all the pistons, 
The new piston set comes with new rings and new gudgeon pin. Now you just need to insert the pistons. Make sure you have a piston ring compressor. Okay, I'll go ahead and tap on that part right there. All right, so the problem I've been running into, by the way, don't forget to oil your cylinders. I did that before even starting this. Just put some on your hand and rub it all the way around along the bottom of each cylinder so that these will slide in nicely. Um, what The problem we've been running into is I've been tightening this too tight. So I'm like, why isn't it moving? It, won't go into the cylinder. It's just because this was too tight. So it turns out while I was trying to install piston number four, I ended up breaking the middle piston ring. Um, this compression tool uh, was just a little too tall and it bumps up against the inside of the block um, and misaligns the piston so it's at an angle and not going straight in. So um, I decided to take all the rings off. I had to actually buy a new set of rings, a whole new set. Um, and so I took all the rings off, pushed the piston through all the way, put the rings back on, put the compression tool back on, and now it's ready to go back in. Time to put the crank on. So I've run into a little bit of a snag here. When I torque down the connecting rod caps, the crank doesn't want to move anymore. So the oversized bearings are not perfect. They're a little bit too big. To remedy that, I'm going to make little shims out of adhesive aluminum foil. So, I'm going to go ahead and get all these caps off. Alright, so I've added my aluminum shims on the bearing cap here. And poked holes in them for the bolts to go through. So I've bolted this back on, torqued it down, and the crank moves freely as opposed to before when it didn't want to move even with a torque wrench on the end of the crank trying to get it to move. It didn't want to move at all. So um, what you do next is get some plastic gauge and you want to check the tolerance to make sure these shims aren't too much. I put two layers on each side of the adhesive aluminum foil and the clearance for these bearings 0 0.011 to 0 0.056 is your tolerance there. So somewhere in there is where you want to land. So what you do, this plastic gauge comes in these piece of paper, it's wrapped in a piece of paper. You open it up and the tolerance is so tight. Look how small this plastic gauge strip is. It's itty bitty. So you cut off a length about, about that long so it fits. The, the width of the journal. You just lay it on the width of the journal there. Torque the cap back on to the torque setting, 27 foot-pounds on this one. And once it's been squished in there, you match it up to one of these here. 
and whichever one it's closest to is what you have. So it's it's white and green only because they want to separate this one from that one, that one from that one. Um, so this one's the smallest reading than the next. And if your reading is somewhere in between one of these two readings, then you take an average of the two readings. So somewhere in between the two readings is where you'll be. So I went ahead and put the cap back on, torqued it down. As you can see, kind of, it's hard to see. It squished it in two different spots there, but we can take a measurement of the larger one to get an idea of how close it's getting and the closest it's getting. And then the smaller one for how far away it's getting. So it is actually somewhere between, so this one is a little bit bigger than the white, 0 0.038 millimeters. As you can see right there, it's a little bit bigger than the 0 0.038. And this one is a little bit smaller than the 0 0.025. So, on average, it's somewhere in between these two, which 0 0.038 and 0 0.025 fit within that right there. Now we just have to do it three more times. The rest of the bearing caps torqued down and had the clearance within the tolerance at just around 0 0.038. Um, all three of them were about the same, which is nice. That fits nicely where we want it. And I double checked. The crank moves freely. It's a little more friction than it used to be because of the pistons. But it's moving uh, as much as I would expect. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Unfortunately, this is the end of part one, but join me for the other parts of this engine rebuild. Click here to see the rest of those videos. Click here to subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Bye.